congratulations. You now have good balance. I'm assuming that you've got a slight inward knee flex. The weight's on the inside perimeters of your feet. Your arms are hanging loosely in front of you. Your spine's tilted from the lower back. The back is straight. As I said, you've got a little life in the legs with a slight inward knee pressure. Now we're going to use that balance to create a high performance power plant in your golf swing. It's going to be the source of momentum that swings the club. Okay? How we're going to do that, we're going to put three elements to work. The first is coil pressure. The second is weight shift. And the third is connection. I'm going to invite my victim, my student, Michelle, to come back in here, and we're going to use Michelle, we're going to teach Michelle and you, hopefully at the same time, how to bring coil pressure into your golf swing. Like Michelle, would you step right over here, Michelle, and assume your balanced position that we learned in lesson one. Okay, now for now, just put your arms right out in front of you, if you would. You notice Michelle has nice inward knee pressure, putting the weight on the insides of her feet, like she has fallen arches. Okay? Now, just for the sake of discussion, I'm going to ask Michelle to turn her right heel out a little bit into an uh, uncomfortable position. I'm going to turn her back to the target. Now, I'm hoping that because of that heel position, you feel a lot of pressure on the inside of your right leg. Is that right? Yes. Okay, good. Let's go back here. There are really two elements to create coil pressure. The first is turning the left shoulder to a point, as you're looking at us, above her right hip. See how that's in line there? That's the coiling of the torso. The second element, which is vitally important, as important as the first is, to maintain a slight inward knee flex of the right knee. We don't want the knee going outside the foot. We don't want it straightening up. This idea of setting pressure on the inside of the right foot and knee is what I call the right pivot point. Okay, the question is now, what do we do next? Michelle's coiled very well. She's got her left shoulder above the right hip and her right pivot point set. How do we unwind? This is where the creation of centrifugal force is done. Okay? What she's going to do is she's going to shift that weight off of that pressure point or pivot point, namely the right knee and the inside of the right foot. She's going to shift that right knee right toward the ball. And when that happens, watch closely, the weight shifts to the left foot. Okay, and she sets, establishes a left pivot point. Let's try that again. So she coils to set the right pivot point, shifts the right knee at the ball, sets a left pivot point. You'll notice that Michelle's hips have already started to unwind, which is a good sign. Let's try that one more time. And this time, Michelle is going to, as soon as she sets a left pivot point, she's just going to rotate her hips right to the target so that her belt buckle faces the target. Great. We're demonstrating the, the creation of momentum with what I call the lighthouse turn. In other words, we ask Michelle to keep her, her arms pointed straight out in front of her, and we're building a powerful rotary motion. It's almost a, a horizontal arc. The arms are completely passive relative to the front of the body. It reminds me of the sweeping beam of a lighthouse as it turns in the night. So I'd like you, I'd like you to straighten your right foot, please. I'd like you to practice the lighthouse turn at home. Let's everybody wind up now in the lighthouse turn and hold the position. I'd like to emphasize that in the lighthouse turn, as you unwind, make your weight shift to create momentum, the knees control the weight shift. This is unusual. You may not even have heard it before. So I'd like to give you an image that's going to bring to life the idea the importance of the knees in your weight shift. It's important as you wind up, I'd like you to picture a pair of cymbals like you have in a marching band. Pretend you have a cymbal on the inside of your knees. So when you wind up, make your shift. I'd like you to drive that right knee toward the ball and then clap the cymbals together on your left leg as you establish that all-important left pivot point. Michelle is making an excellent lighthouse turn so far. She has good coil pressure on her right pivot point. She's making a nice weight shift. 
Now we need to add one more element to ensure that her coil pressure and her weight shift uncoil the upper body, namely her shoulders and arm triangle. And that is the third element of momentum, and what is it? Connection. It was first used in reference to golf by Jimmy Ballard, who called it a natural sequential wholeness of motion. And I'd like to use connection in a slightly different term, and I'm asking you to think of it in terms of the fact that the abdominal muscles and the lats connect the shoulders and the hips. So these muscles here are responsible for ensuring that the shoulders turn when the hips do. A common mistake, or one that you might have found that you made the first time you tried lighthouse turn, is people will shift the weight, turn the hips, and th these muscles will stretch and the shoulders won't be affected. And then you're forced to unload with the arms. So I'd like to demonstrate with Michelle now the feeling of connection here so that when the hips turn, the triangle goes with it. Okay, would you like to try that? Sure. Any sort of disconnection will cause a loss of momentum. Now you'll notice I'm going to put pressure here and when Michelle moves her knees and hips, her connection in this area will, will put pressure on my hand and actually push me around. Let's see that. See the pressure from her triangle generated by the connection of these muscles to her hips? Let's see that again. Now if Michelle disconnects and allows those muscles to stretch, see what kind of pressure I get. Nothing. Okay? Let's check the lighthouse turn. Everybody do your lighthouse turn at home and see if you can look as good as Michelle here does after one short lesson. Okay, perfect wind up, finish. Let's review the checkpoints briefly. The triangle points at the hole, it's relaxed, lightweight. Belt buckle also faces the target. The knees are touching, the cymbals have clapped together. The weight's solid on the left foot, the right heel's in the air, the toes touching the ground. I like to see you wear out a nice dark spot on the toe of your right shoe from finishing in this position in your lighthouse turn. One last point, to notice Michelle's belt buckle is slightly closer to the target than her nose. I'd like you to be in the same position unless you have an exceptionally large nose. If you're finishing in this position with your head out closer than your belt buckle, chances are you didn't really use your hips or your right pivot point to unwind. You just turn your shoulders without the benefit of the lower body and really are setting up a hit impulse even in the lighthouse turn. So I'd like to see the belly a little closer to the target than your nose. We'll talk about that more in lesson three.